Hi and welcome to day four of Wave. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff. Today we're gonna draw another winner, but first let's look at today's tip where Nick builds on Friday's advice for how to reduce measurement noise with your signal analyzer. Hey everyone, my name is Nick Penn, and we're gonna talk more about measuring low level signals. Something that we've talked about in a previous video is improving your displayed average noise level, or DANL, by narrowing your resolution bandwidth. But what if that isn't enough? The next step is to minimize your input attenuation. Lowering your input attenuation does not affect your sweep speed, unlike lowering your resolution bandwidth setting. But you better watch out. A zero dB input attenuation can overdrive your signal analyzer's mixer, causing compression and IF overload. For my previous video, here, the top trace shows 100 kHz resolution bandwidth, and the second trace shows a 10 dB noise floor improvement with a 10 kHz resolution bandwidth. Now, let's see the noise floor improvement when I lower the input attenuation. I'll reduce the input attenuation from 10 dB to 0 dB. You can see that we've picked up about 10 dB of additional dynamic range. By reducing the input attenuation and resolution bandwidth, I was able to lower the noise floor by 20 dB. Now we can clearly see the low level spur. If you'd like to learn more about input attenuation settings and improving the sensitivity on your signal analyzer, go check out the application note, Signal Analyzer Fundamentals, which discusses optimizing your noise floor, resolution bandwidth, and more. And that Spectrum Analysis Basics app note is legendary in the RF engineering community. So if you're new to the RF side of things or want to brush up on your RF fundamentals, I highly recommend checking it out. It's also like 80 pages long. So if you're experienced with RF, there's also something there for you too. And now let's draw today's winner. Today's winner is, it's a little bit of a mouthful, Utku Kamiktarak. Congratulations, Utku. We will be in touch with you shortly. We're also potentially giving away some 1000X series oscilloscopes, so check out the schematic challenge on our Keysight RF and Keysight Bench Facebook pages. A quick side note, if you are in South Asia Pacific, so that's New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, or Thailand, we have a special contest just for you. So if you go to your version of the WAVE webpage, so wave.keysight.com and select South Asia Pacific, you'll see the details for that contest in the sidebar. If you have any questions, check the FAQs page on the WAVE website. There's a link for that in the description and at the bottom of the WAVE webpage. And if we don't answer your questions there, you can also ask it in the comments below. That's all for today, thanks for watching, and make sure you subscribe to the Keysight Labs YouTube channel. I'll see you tomorrow. I wonder what the, the frequency is of this. Do you have a tape measure? Yeah. You can find the frequency of the thing. All right, let's see. Peak to peak, so like 35 and a half inches, 0.9 meters. Um, so if a meter is 300 megahertz, it's got to be like 330 megahertz yep. sign. 330 megahertz. There you go. You can measure it with the 500 megahertz scope if it were a waveform.